Alice Johnson. And the introduction of the speaker by Brother Malachi Nisbet. And the speaker will be Reverend Dorothy Lynn Jones. And the remarks will be Reverend Bob Steele in that order. Shall we proceed? Brother Bryce, are you on the line? Brother Bryce Johnson, the scripture. Okay. Okay, I will I will start with the scripture. Um we want to look at Proverbs 11, 14, stand for the reading of the word. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Oh, word of the Lord. Sister Alice... Yeah, she's at work and she was not, um, she was trying to make it here on time, but if not, um, let me see, Mr. Ballard, can you pray for us? Yes. Heavenly Father, for having us come together, Lord. Lead and guide us at understanding what the, um, the speaker is going to say. Touch Sister Dar um, Minister Darceline Jones, Lord, that she be able to put the information that we need to help us to lift us up and learn and study and protect one another. No lines in our hearts. Lord, I just thank you, Lord. Praise. And amen. Okay. Brother Malachi? Hi, how are you? Uh, uh, the introduction. Reverend Dorseline Jones is a member of the Zion Baptist Church in Ambler, PA, under the pastorate of Reverend Dr. Ernest Armstrong. At Zion, she serves as an, as an associate minister, a biblical advisor to the school to the biblical school of learning and assist with late evening prayers, prayer meetings on every day. She is, a, she is a wife of Brother William Jones, 50 years, and God has blessed yeah. two daughters and one grandson. Brother Dorseline, her geological partner at Mena Bible Institute. She is a graduate of the Southern Bible Institute, Christian Research and Health. Strong Hill Baptist Church, Biblical Counseling, Geneva, Geneva College, Center of Urban Theological Studies, AA, Biblical Studies, BS, and Bible and Ministry, and received her MA in Counseling for Biblical Theological Seminary in Hatfield, PA. For nearly 14 years, Reverend Jones has been employed at Murak, Meraki a nonprofit human services program, providing TSS and outpatient therapy to children and adolescents with mental and behavioral health diagnoses. Second Timothy says, that is to show thyself to God, a workman that, is, that needeth not to be rightly dividing the word of truth. The scripture that is giving her the stick to witness defend her studies at the above institutions and the scriptures which confirm her that she will come to the work at Reverend Jones is called to preach, teach, intercede, and give biblical counsel to God's people. God sent one of his servants by to remind her that he is a, she is a state, but not a of God. The attraction is the Lord for Jesus Christ. God's declared my my glory. I will not go to another. For my grace to break Isaiah 42. Thank you. You too. Uh, mute everyone again. 
uh, and allow uh, Reverend Dorsaline to begin her presentation. Please, uh, uh, Minister Dorsaline, can you unmute yourself and uh, uh, begin your presentation? Reverend Dorsaline, please unmute yourself. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Grace and peace to our pastor, Dr. Ernest Flores, Reverend Wendell Still, Reverend Barbara Still, members of the Star of Zion Missionary Ministry, as well as those on the prayer line. I'd like to thank you for the invitation to minister on the topic, youth suicide. Praise and honor unto our God for his manifold blessing. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, we praise you because you are God. We thank you, God, that you're in control and we know that the enemy has already tried to raise his ugly head but we bind every demonic spirit that has been assigned to interrupt, to do whatever he can to keep the word from going forth. So God, I thank you for the angels that's, that are standing on beside me, protecting me, that your word will go forth in power, in clarity, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And this is the second presentation where we will be speaking, preaching on youth suicide. Our youth is under demonic attack. They are the church of tomorrow. They are gifted, innovators, and talented individuals. They have creative ideas, for being the next entrepreneurs, educators, senators, congressmen, congresswomen, musicians, attorneys, president of the United States, medical professionals, MDs, scientists, pharmacists, to name a few professions. However, there is an enemy from the spiritual world called Satan. He is targeting the young because they are a threat to his kingdom if they become born again Christian with all their God given gifts and talents. And one of my personal resources, the popular encyclopedia of Christian counseling by doctors Tim Clinton and Ron Hawkins, it states, Suicide is the eighth leading cause of death in United States. Suicide is the third leading cause of death among teenagers. The dynamics of suicide are highly complex. Simple explanations and easy solutions do not exist. These statements were made prior to COVID-19. Suicide is not the will of God. What is suicide? Suicide is the act of intentionally causing one's own death, according to Wikipedia. There are many sources available that gives updated statistics, possible causes, why young people commit suicide. Depression is one of the leading causes of suicide. Other reasons are no hope, no purpose, and no meaning. Recently, I was listening to a sermon by Pastor Jeff Sharave, TBN, and he stated in 2019, 47,571 committed suicide and 1.38 million attempted suicide. It is not clear how many were young people, 
Statistics vary among different sources. Pastor Rick Warren, author of The Purpose Driven Church, gave his testimony on TBN about his son, Matthew, who committed suicide in 2013. Pastor Warren stated his son, Matthew, suffered from depression all of his life. Matthew had suicidal thoughts and felt like he was in a dark hole. Matthew was 27 years old when he committed suicide. If you are a young person who suffers from depression, here are five steps to coping with depression by healthymindphilly.org. One, get out there. Although everyone needs downtime, resist the urge to isolate yourself. When you are in depression, you wanna isolate yourself. You don't wanna be around anybody. You wanna be in your room with the drapes drawn. If a friend asks you to go out and you don't feel up to it, commit to something smaller. It may make you feel better. Number two, find support. Look around your community for a local group where you can get some support. A quick internet search for local depression support groups will likely yield you some options. Eat well. Depression makes some people lose their appetite and others to eat more. It is important to try and eat a healthy diet when you are depressed to give you the greatest chance of feeling well physically. Carbohydrates are especially helpful for serotonin production, but try complex carbs such as whole grains, fruit, and vegetables. I just wanna uh, just iterate here about eating well. We know that a lot of teenagers, a lot of youth do not eat healthy meals. They like a lot of junk foods. And the manufacturers or the producers of these snacks, they know what they're doing. It's all about the money. We know that red dye and uh, yellow dye number two are culprits and causes mental health issues. So when you are buying snacks for your kids, I urge you to read the back of the package and see what junk are in the foods. Many of the, on the back of the package, many of the names of the ingredients are polysyllabic words, words that you cannot pronounce. When you see that, that is a clear indication that there is a lot of chemicals a lot of drunk, ju uh, junk foods, and it will affect your young person's behavior. Move your feet, number four. Whatever movement you can do, give it a try. Exercise is a natural mood booster. Releasing endorphins, those are the feel-good hormones and reducing stress. It is important that young people get exercise. During the pandemic, most of the young people sat in the house on the sofa playing video games, watching YouTube, TV, and all other things. They didn't exercise. And I have seen so many kids that have gained 20, 30, 40 pounds or maybe in a year's time. What do you think that do to their self-esteem when they can't get into the cute little clothing that most kids their age are wearing? Number five, focus on today. Don't try to project too far ahead. Focus on just getting through this day. There are many factors that will cause a person to commit suicide. Mental disorders are real. There are so many mental disorders. 
that those that are in the, uh, the mental health field, we have a book called the DSM-5. And I didn't bring it out of my library, but it's about that thick. And it lists all the mental disorders there are. There are so many mental disorders that children are diagnosed with. Unfortunately, some children are misdiagnosed. So what I will say is if your child is diagnosed, get a second opinion, do some research, find out things for yourself. A mental disorder is diagnosed by a psychiatrist, psychologist, or a trained licensed therapist. If you suspect your young person is not himself or herself, make an appointment with their pediatrician or family doctor. After the consultation with the doctor, do some research on how you can help them. They may need further intervention, such as a counselor, therapist, psychologist, psychiatrist, or an agency where further assistance and medication management are available. God works through the medical community. Let me say that again. God works through the medical community. What is the role of the church? The church has to do a better job teaching the word of God to our youth. Too many churches are focusing on entertainment for our youth. Activities are wonderful and important and are beneficial in many, many ways. But it is the word of God that will save. It is the word of God that will comfort. It is the word of God that will deliver. It is the word of God that will set the captives free. The Bible says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Genesis 1, 27. Behold, all souls are mine. Ezekiel 18, 4a. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well, Psalms 139, 14. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward, Psalms 127, 3. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me, Psalms 27, 10. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, six. We must remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6.12. Many of our youth are addicted to social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and others. They are looking for entertainment. They are looking for truth. They are looking for information. Information changes, and many conspiracies are told on these platforms. There are those who are out to pull the youth until they own sick agendas. Listen to what Jesus stated about truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, John 14, 6. The church must get back to basics, teaching our youth the word of God. Listen to what Jesus said. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, 
to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Luke 4.18. How can parents, guardians, caregivers help? Dr. Claire McCarthy, senior faculty editor of Harvard Health Publishing stated, we are in the midst of a pediatric mental health crisis and parents need to take action. We can't leave it, leave it, leave it up to others. We have to take action. They are our children. They are our family members and we love them and we want the best for them. In the fall of 2021, the American Academy of Pediatrics, along with the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry and the Children's Hospital Association declare a national emergency in child and adolescent mental health. At many agencies, there are a long list of children's names waiting for therapy. Mental health is just as important as physical health. First and foremost, we must understand that if a child has a fever or a persistent cough, parents react. How do they react? They take their temperature, they give them some Tylenol or acetaminophen, or they may make an appointment at urgent care or the pediatrician. The mental health of our children is crucial. Create rituals of communication and safe spaces to talk. I wanna pause here because a lot of times, our ch a lot of the children do not know how to hold a conversation anymore because they are on the video games. And if you research the video games and the things that go into them, you will see that they are targeting, targeting them. And parents need to research before they go out and buy these games. Whether it's a family dinner, a family game night, talking on the ride to school, or a nightly, a nightly check in before bed. Parents need to hold conversations with their children. When your children come home, ask them, how was your day? How are things going? Is there anything bothering you? Hold a conversation with your children. It is so important. When I worked in the school district um, as a TSS, therapeutic staff support, the things that I saw are horrendous. I saw children bullying other children. And at the agency, we are told we cannot fraternize with uh, the other students. We have to keep focus on our client. I can recall sitting near the back close to my client and the teacher was working at the smart board. And there was one student who got up, crawled along the floor. He had an open large paper clip, a uh, paper clip, and he was sticking the other child. Well, the child was fearful. The child wouldn't say nothing. And you know, these children are smart. He would cut his eye at me because he knew that I was there for my client and my client alone, but he got the right one because I reported him. And I told him, if you do it again, I'm going to tell again. I will tell, you know, I will report them when I was in that position. So when your child comes home, ask them about that day. Ask them if they're being bullied. I tell my clients, you have a right to go to school. You have a right to learn. You have a right not to be bullied by anyone. No one has a, a right to put their hands on you. And you need to tell the teacher, tell the counselor, tell the principal, tell the security guard. And when you go home, you tell your parents or guardians. It's very, very important. Make sure your child has downtime. Make sure that there's time for them to do the things they enjoy. Make sure your child is getting enough sleep. Very important. Some children are sleep deprived. 
there are children that go to bed at one and two and three o'clock in the morning because they cannot sleep. And the teeth, and excuse me, and the doctor may prescribe medication for them to help them to sleep. But there are some common sense things you can do if your child doesn't sleep. Make sure they take a bath or shower at night. It's common. You can use um, lavender in the bath water. They can have a little milk at night. You can play music, quiet music. We call it white noise music, such as the sounds of the oceans. It is so common and it can help them. Keep in touch with teachers, coaches, and other adults in your child's life. Try to make your home a judgment-free safe haven. Pay attention to your mental health. Children pay more attention to what parents do than what they say. There are two poems, poems, excuse me, that parents can use to help their youth. The first poem is entitled, You Have What It Takes. Now, this is a poem that was written by George Washington Carver. And we know that George Washington Carver discovered many uses for the peanut. Many young people have accepted the lie of the devil that they cannot succeed, they cannot make positive contribution to society. And this is one of the poems I like to read to my clients during Black History Month. And I'm just gonna basically read maybe the first two stanza. It says, it's entitled, You Have What It Takes by George Washington Carver. Figure it out for yourself, my lad. You all that the greatest of men have had Two arms, two hands, two legs, two eyes, and a brain to use if you would be wise. With this equipment, they all began to start from the top and say, I can. Look them over, the wise and the great. They take their food from a common plate and similar laces, they tie their shoes. The world considers them brave and smart but you all have all that they made from their start. So I tell them, you can make great accomplishments. You can, you have a brain. They had a brain. You have two arms, you have two legs, you can do it. A second poem I use in my session is a poem entitled, Children Learn What They Live. And I know the educators out there are familiar with this poem. It was written by Dorothy Law Nolte. Um, I read this to parents and caregivers, teaching them ways to rear their children. And I'm just going to just highlight some of the, um, the important uh, lines in this poem. It says, if children live with ridicule, they learn to feel shy. If children live with encouragement, they learn confidence. If children live with approval, they learn to like themselves. If children live with recognition, they learn it is good to have a goal. If children live with sharing, they learn generosity. If children live with kindness and consideration, they learn respect. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So poems like this are very, very important. Even the book, I Think I Can, to build a child's esteem. I came across that book over 40 some years ago, the little engine that could. And that really helps children to understand that they can do well. They may not get an A in math, but if they do their best, they may come away with a B a B plus. So you want to encourage your children. You wanna speak over them. You wanna pray over them. Children go through so much in their lives, in the school, in neighborhoods. There are children for the past two years, didn't go outside much because of the violence. They sat in their houses. They heard the gunfire. It is so sad, so sad. 
and we need to pray for the children in Philadelphia. My heart goes out. I'm from Philadelphia, but I have never seen the violence that are that is being displayed today. And it's demonic. It's not of God to be killing young people who have so much to give, but they don't reach their destiny. So we really, we are thankful. We should be thankful. When I look at the children in Zion and I look at parents coming, bringing their children to church, the children dress so beautifully, clean. And then God gave me the assignment to go where I've been for over 14 years. And I tell you, the scenes that I have, that I saw, make tears come to your eyes. You can't help but shed tears and to pray and to be thankful that the Lord has blessed us with much in our church. In closing, excuse me. In the conclusion, I would like to say, whatever is going on in your life or the life of your child or children, whether it's mental illness, health problems, relational problems with parents, guardians, caregivers, school difficulties, feelings of abandonment, isolation, depression, suicidal ideation, negative labels or statements said to you about you, or a mental health diagnosis or diagnoses, remember El Roy, the Hebrew name meaning the God who sees. And we find that in Genesis 16, 13. It is the story of Hagar, Sarai, and Abram. Hagar felt hopeless, betrayed, but God saw her pain, her mistreatment. He is the immutable God. He is the same God who sees your pain, your situation, your dilemma. And he is the God who says, I am the Lord. I change not. Matthew 3, 6b. I am El Roy. Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Revelation 17, 18. God bless you, saints. Thank you. Thank you very much. Reverend Dorsaline Jones, you have given us a lot of knowledge. And with that, a lot of understanding. You took us from giving us the definition of suicide, going to the five steps to avoid suicide, and then telling us about what a parent can do to help keep their child from becoming suicidal. Uh, I thank you so much. Uh, we're going to open it up now for questions. If anyone has a question,